Now, your News 9 Sports. See what happens when you don't think someone's going to show up for work? It draws you in, and now you're paying much more attention. Certain things just feel impossible, like there being two of the same person, or the Brewers getting swept by the Pirates. And yet, here we are. You want to take this read, Original Alex, or should yeah, I do didn't it? didn't realize we were doing a parent trap thing here, but by all means, New Alex, you go ahead yes. and take this one. All right. At about 3.16 today, these were the scripts and notes for sports. Today at 3.17, they became completely useless. Love that for us. As we finally, after months of waiting and years of drama, found out Aaron Rodgers' future. Well, this came out of nowhere. Get ready for the Big 16 Conference because reports emerged today that USC and UCLA are set to join the Big 10. At least they won't have to change the logo much. I almost decided not to show up for work today. I mean, if the Packers don't have to, why should I? But after my boss simplified what would happen if I didn't, well, here I am. Uh, you know, I could really get used to this whole bye week thing. I mean, Matt LaFleur did say that rest and relaxation were the two most important elements for his team this week. You know it's summer when I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers getting tattooed to fill time. The QB revealed his ink to the world yesterday. And there's been a lot of speculation about what it means, but I think I've cracked the code. He sees himself as a star, and he'd be lying if he said that calm waters were ahead for the offense. So they need to open the playbook or they're going down. Or his new girl, Blue Moon Star Child of Earth, told him to get it. Who knows? The point is, the offense has a long way to go this offseason. To get the early highlights, I'm joined now by none other than News 9 Sports Director Alex Stewart. Alex, what's your reaction tonight? Catherine, I'm not mad. I'm just... <laughs> Disappointed. There are a lot of things changing in Wisconsin right now. The seasons, the weather, the Brewers logo. Oh, let me uh, let me fix that here. There we go. Whoa. Magic of TV, folks. The Badgers football team came into today riding a two-game losing streak, but they were looking to grab the bowl by the horns against Iowa to get their season back on track. And I don't mean a figure to bowl the two play for the Heartland Trophy, which is a giant brass bowl. But enough about that. To the action we go. Well, a special game means a special sportscast. I am live from Stevens Point, where Cat Scratch Fever has struck the top of the Wisconsin Valley Conference as the 9-1 Spash Panthers play host to the 9-1 Marshfield Tigers, with the winner of this game getting at least a piece of that conference crown. Home opener. There are perhaps no two greater, more celebrated, or near sacred words in the vernacular of any fan base, especially in baseball. Well, Saturday nights might be all right, and Sundays are fun days, but it's hard to beat the feeling of a Friday night, especially ones like this. Aaron Rodgers is gone, right? So naturally, I think they're going offense. Now, the popular pick is a wide receiver at number 13. I'm feeling a little froggy. I woke up feeling dangerous today. I'm saying they go with a tight end. And there you have it. The first pick in the post Aaron Rodgers era at number 13 is not a receiver for the 21st year in a row, but rather the man they call Hercules. Now, I don't know if Lucas Van Ness puts the glad in gladiator, but he should absolutely make Packers fans glad that he was the pick. You couldn't ask for better baseball weather today as the precious few teams still left alive across the state of Wisconsin all hit the diamonds with a trip to the state tournament on the line. And I found the cheer squad here and uh, they have been nice enough to offer to teach me an official Marshfield Tigers cheer. I don't know how pretty this is going to be. About the rest, let's go. Tigers, Tigers are, are the best. best. Are the best. Are the best. Woo! Yeah. Back to you guys in the studio. I can at least get the toe touch. Uh, 
The Packers are headed back to the NFC Championship game after defeating the Seattle Seahawks 28-23. It was a close game as most had expected, but what they might not have expected was the Packers' success on converting third downs. It was quite the homecoming for Cobb, who, like Jay-Z, took a moment to reintroduce himself to the Packers faithful, and with a vintage performance like this, it felt like he never left. After winning Game 5, Bucks fans had to think that destiny was on their side. Bucks in six. But take a closer look at the date, and destiny or not, they should have known no one escapes Jason on Friday the 13th. Today's game represented 36 minutes that this senior class had dreamed of since third grade. Now it marks a moment that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. Well, for the first time in nearly three years, opening day is at full capacity here at American Family Field, and the fans are excited to be back. Yeah! It's been 50 years in the making, but the Milwaukee Bucks are once again champions of the NBA, and they and the entire city of Milwaukee celebrated like it. There is a lot of nervous energy here right now because the entire season comes down to this one game. It was the biggest question in Wisconsin over the last few days. What would the first pick in the post Aaron Rodgers era be? Would the green and gold go get a talented pass catcher? The answer, nope. But hey, at least this time the pick isn't from Georgia. If you take a look around, you might notice a lot of construction here at 1265 Lombardi Avenue, both out here and in the receiver room. It may have been said a time or two that there's no place like home. But over the last few years, Brewers games in Milwaukee just haven't felt the same. Well, for the first time in a long time, American Family Field felt like home. Okay, so what are we going to learn here? Okay, I'm just going to teach you a little simple thing that the drum line does, so it just goes. So just, can you do that at all? We're, we're about to find out. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're... And the first person to empty their box wins. All right, so I'm about to get embarrassed here by a bunch of high school kids. These kids are ridiculously fast. The tissues are ripping. They're ripping. I'm close to the bottom, I think. I'm sure our uh, insurance company is loving seeing this on air. That's in there. That's a bullseye, and that's going to do it for this week's Wisconsin Outdoors. <laughs> that's it. Well, for myself and Pride, I think we'll see you next time on Wisconsin Outdoors. If that is not the magic of March, I don't know what is. Are you not entertained? I am here with a couple of the players. Now, you hit the go-ahead three-point shot. Yes, what was going through your mind when you lined that up and let it fly? Bear witness to greatness. You know, I'm having a hard time putting into words what we witnessed tonight from you, Mr. Eric Kennessy. But one word's coming to mind here, and that's historic. 51 points, the most points ever scored in a WIAA tournament game. What are your emotions right now? Guys, a dream no more. This is reality since third grade. You've dreamt of this moment. Walk me through your emotions right now. It may be St. Patrick's Day, but there was no luck involved in that. That was all skill. What does that say about your team? Coach, a bit of a slow start to the game. All of a sudden, the last five, six minutes, you're cooking with peanut oil. Things are picking up. What changed, and how do you keep that going in the second? You know, I kept seeing through those last couple minutes you were going, not one, not two. We got three in a row. How does it feel? I mean, perfection is always strived for but rarely reached. You guys did it. He wasn't the only history maker tonight. The team as a whole, the first WIAA playoff win. How does that feel to know that you've etched your name in the school history books and no one has taken that from you? Let me come over here. You know, they really should have got me a uh, crate or something to stand on, really making me feel short. But, Jeremy, team's leading scorer, 25 points tonight. How did it feel? Were you just in the zone? Was it your teammates? Walk me through your performance today.
To err is human. To err multiple times in crucial situations and lose to the Giants, Jets, and Commanders three weeks in a row is the Packers this year. Well, growing up, my parents always told me that nothing that good ever happens after midnight. See, I did listen. It would appear that two years later, the beautiful mystery of Aaron Rodgers' future has been solved. No further darkness retreats or ayahuasca needed, and no bizarre tattoo deciphering required either. Aaron Rodgers is off to the Jets. Between the tattoo, the ayahuasca, his breakup, and now the rib injury and thumb injury as well, the Spotify rap numbers on us talking about topics not involving the play of Aaron Rodgers this year are pretty high. And you the Brewers are offering a really cool immersive fan experience for those of you that couldn't attend the game tonight against the Twins. All you have to do is grab a tarp, put it in your yard, get yourself one of these, and stand in the rain staring at the tarp. I promise it'll be just like you're there. Now, now your News 9 Sports. Welcome to NFL Draft Week, where the mock drafts are made up and the Packers' needs don't matter because they won't take a receiver and they'll trade for something unnecessary anyway. Like Grandma always used to say, sometimes the obvious answer is the right one. And in this case, that's exactly what it is. Draft day 2023 is here, and after the day after the Super Bowl and the kickoff to a new season, it's the day that most football fans feel is an unofficial holiday because, honestly, it feels a lot like Christmas. The 2022 season for the Brewers ended in disappointment. However, with the 2023 home opener now here, hope is renewed. But regardless of how the season ends, you can always count on one thing every year, and that's that the fans will always be there. From AmFam Field, I'm Alex Stewart, News 9 Sports. It was a perfect fall day for football as the Packers and Patriots faced off. However, the play on the field was far from perfection. Out Milwaukee Day proved to be nothing short of special and served as a good reminder that home is where the heart is. And despite a few years away, that heart is as strong as ever in both this team and fan base. It is cold, Nina, and we're fixing to wake up the whole neighborhood because we're out of the stadium and we got the drum line playing behind us. They are absolutely bringing the energy. Well, they certainly enjoyed their moment today, but the message was clear all throughout the celebration. People, keep your calendars clear because they expect to meet you right back here in one year. In the last meeting between the Packers and 49ers, the Pack's top receiving threat, Devontae Adams, was held to just 47 yards on seven catches, although he did bring in the Pack's lone score score in the 37 to 8 route. Unlike out here, we won't know what the Packers receiver room renovations look like until this season, but it's a reveal that I'm sure everyone is looking forward to. Now, your news For 980 sports. days, the home of the Brewers looked a lot like this, empty. But today when fans rang their bell, the Brewers answered. Addison, if I had told you just a few hours ago that Giannis would have 44 points, 20 rebounds, and miss just a single free throw in a closeout game, you would have thought it was like last year's NBA Finals all over again. Bucks in six. But we've talked all series about how someone, anyone, needs to step up and help him, and no one did tonight. Compare that to the Celtics, though, who had three players finish with over 20 points, and you can see why they were able to push this to a game seven. I'm Alex Stewart from Lambeau Field. Happy Draft Day, everybody.